Fair enough. <laughs> Erica is? Yeah. It's still somewhere else. Doesn't it start at half past? Is it half past? Oh, was it quarter past? Oh, okay. Oh, do you want me to round them up? Fashion? Are you the fashion man? I'm, I am. I'm doing vegan leather or are you doing drape and... I'm doing the draping thing. On that yeah, side. I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then you're doing the scoby thing. Yeah. <gasps> I'm doing that now. Oh, wonderful. coming up. So I'm going to just double check with Tanya. <laughs> oh, nice to see you. What did you just do? Oh, you enjoyed it? Yeah. I'm going to, we're going to get started because we know the time. I know others are coming in, but we can get rolling, can't yeah. we? Don't you think? So um, uh, today we're talking about um, uh, vegan leathers and uh, bio uh, textiles. So Michael's going to take you through shortly um, the process of of growing a scoby and turning that into a textile, um, which is beautiful. And then I will help you um, create something, a form of whatever you like to do. A different form of vegan leather. And um, I just wanted to firstly introduce myself. I'm Todd, I'm from the, the fashion and um, costume uh, department as an academic here. And then Michael is our creative director. So he approached me about a month ago and said, I've got these scobies and I'm growing, growing them and um, I'm converting them into a vegan leather. Is there anything that you can do with that? And I said to him, oh my God, my heart. The, the innovation of the fashion industry, particularly um, when it comes to animals. I love, I love our furry friends. So I said, I'd love to be a part of um, uh, vegan substitutes for leather that are... Because a lot of people um, assume, and rightfully so, that um, a lot of the um, substitutes for leather are polyurethane based. Yes, they're. So at least to stand the test of time that way. Um, uh, but a lot of people extras in there. Um, this, um, I prepare like a crazy person. So there's a lot of information in here. So I'm going to scan over it. And then we're going to email this to you all. So there's two videos in here. The first one is a three minute video with Stella McCartney, who I adore. And she just talks about, I'm not going to play this for you. It's for when you get home, if you love this. this And then the second video is my, my third favourite um, substitute. So let's crack on without further ado. Hang on. 
and pressing buttons in no one's time. So this is the Stella McCartney little video. So when I send that to you, please do watch. So I call this the um, so the first one is cork. Now I've got this information on the side of all of them for if you choose to read how these are made and how they're constructed, but I'm not the outcomes of using cork. So, you know, the back, the red sole is um, Christian Louboutin. And um, so, luxury brands are using cork as a substitute for leather. And the one on the far Chanel. So, luxury brands are using this. One of the ladies that I had in the last group, um, she was talking to me about Leather, come on in, my darling. You haven't missed much. We've only just hit the first uh, supplement for leather. So sit down, make yourself at home, my love. Better late than not at all, I've always said to my students. Um, so um, uh, I said to the metallic uh, lapels and, and details, that was made out of pineapple, it wasn't leather. And, and she went, really? She said, I love Chanel so much more. I said, so because of that. So just moving along, it's not doing what I wanted it to do. So recycled rubber, this is the only uh, non-biodegradable uh, vegan leather in my list. And the reason why it's in my list is because it's recycled and this, le this, this recycled rubber comes from the inner tube of car tyres, which is a And you can create things like shop later. So a lot of designers, particularly in accessories, utilise it. But it makes accessories. This is made out of mushroom. And uh, it's called Moo Skin. Biodegradable. As a matter of fact, when the mushroom decomposes, it gives nutrients back to the soil. So that makes me even happier. And um, it, it, it's, it looks like leather. It has the same malleability as like a... a um, uh, It has a really beautiful uh, texture to it that looks like a skin. Just to also jump back a second to let you know um, is, because um, I had a question earlier on, fashion leather is not a byproduct from meat. It's a misconception that some people have. They're actually two different um, herds. And um, the, uh, the leather that we wear is calf le leather because the, the older the It's, I just have to say that bit because that's what's so important. We've got to let those babies have a life. So this is the little video that when you get this, when you get home and we email this to you and you're having your cup of tea and you think about the workshops you did today and you remember this one's your favourite, then you'll go on and you'll click into this and you'll watch this little thing. And this will show you how they make virtual land space. You can Um, have heard it of the, as the um, agava plants. It's got two names. And this doesn't look like leather. This to me looks like a densely woven, uh, like a canvas. It's kind of like the, the book covers that you've got. You, yeah, a lot of the vegan leathers are hard to get that bright, but this one you can. 
For those of you who are in virtual land, there's a lady in the room who's colours as bright as this, um, as that one. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's a beautiful texture. Okie dokie. Then this one, if you like more organic uh, inspired or organic looking um, uh, outcomes, this is teak leaves. It's this transparency to it, and it actually has this very similar type of um, way that it works. But I, I find this quite beautiful and ghost like because you can see all of the veins through all of the leaves. So, I realistically, I have seen people dye this, and I have seen people um, treat it and coat it, but um, I like it like past life. It's Quite poetic about that. So over the last few years, and this is what I call the silver, the silver lining to the COVID, the technologies that really out of experimentation into reality and really being used within industries. And um, so this ultra suede is a Japanese. Uh, uh, textiles and suede has been the most difficult thing for the fashion industry to replicate and uh, so they've done by the time it can they continue to innovate it and it comes across to them, as you can see it sitting in industries so once one industry gets it and perfects it it will flow it'll have a knock-on effect once it gets to us hopefully it's a little bit better for the environment, but hey, it's not killing anything. So that's at least a step in the right direction, am I right? Okay. This one is coffee leather. Now this one I love because it, you don't have to dye it. These are the tones that it comes out. So this one I actually think looks a little bit like suede. Doesn't feel like it though, but it has, and I think because the tones change as Gives the a visual texture, but it's not as a tactile like suede. But it smells like coffee. That's it. Actually, smells, for a while, yeah, for a while, it smells like coffee. So if you're a coffee uh, lover and all you in virtual landscape, um, it does smell like coffee. So get yourself a pair of those runners. If you're like me, I'm a coffee addict. I'm never going to buy them in case I am dying for one. I chew the chew my toe. But the outcomes are amazing. Look at that product. Like you can see it's gone beyond experimental and now it's, it's actually um, viable and commercially viable, which is the main thing. This is, this is a really beautiful one that a lot of people don't know about. And this is the coffee as well as the wine is they're actually byproducts to the coffee bean. So they don't, we're not losing our cup of Byproduct after we've actually drunk it, you know, when they crushed it, crushed, it's that bit. The same as with the grape. I keep touching the screen and it's, I know it's um, virtual, so sorry about that. I know if I touch it, it'll work. Um, but um, these beautiful colours have not been dyed into this. This is from the colour of the grape. It's natural. Isn't it beautiful? Um, so these are from the skin. So um, again, we don't have to not get our wine to have the leather, uh, we can drink the wine and then make the leather, which I think is really beautiful. And you can see this entire image from the leather or new leather. Growing Um, we're just going through a list of my favourite vegan leathers that are new to market but are biodegradable and not toxic. So we're up to, I don't know, number five, something like that, which is the one that you walked in in the best time. Be yes, you're going to get them, don't you worry. I've just been telling everybody that when you get home, um, this will be sent to you and there's two little videos in there that you can watch and I put all the information as to how things are made 
but I ca I'm not going to read that to you, but we'll send it to you so you can know. You know. No, it's my pleasure. Don't apologise, we'd rather you're late than not at all. My this is the one you're going to be working with today because Michael's made samples of the SCOBY leather, which is really, it's beautifully pliable when you get, you'll get to play with it. But we haven't got enough for everyone to make with that. So um, I've ordered in rolls of uh, paper leather and it's 100% biodegradable, it's washable, it is sewable, you, you can make um, accessories to garments with it. Um, it is, um, what did someone ask me yesterday? Can you steam it and mould it? And I didn't know, so I tested last night. Guess what? You can. So there, I learnt something new, which was really good. And um, so my sister has this bag I'm about to show you. And um, she said to me, she said, I said, oh my God, you have the, um, the, the paper leather bag. And she said, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And I, she said, I bought this because it was cool. And I said, I want that because of what it's made out of. And this is, the, uh, this is what you'll be working with today. So for those of you who are in the virtual space, you can access this. It's actually called Craft Paper with a K. And um, if you pop that into Google, um, uh, the manufacturers in Australia are in Queensland. So you can get it a little bit cheaper if you go direct to them. Um, but there are supplies. Most, I think a lot of art suppliers will have it. Um, but it was a bit tricky for me to find in Melbourne. There's, there's one supplier in Richmond. So if you need help with that, just call me. But good old Google eyes will definitely get you there. Um, and it's approximately, I think, between $25 for a roll, which is about the width of a table and the length of two, something like that. So this is what we'll be working with to create your accessories in a minute. This bag by uh, Bottega Veneta is woven and this is also made of paper. It's very expensive but it's very, very beautiful. So I'm showing you this because you can cut and weave, you can crinkle, uncrinkle, you can fold, you can cut. There's so many things you can do in this workshop and there's less of you so you'll, it'll be easier because the last one was cram cram packed, which we love, but you can change the colour. So I have it in the uh, natural hue that you just saw, that beautiful torpy colour, and I have it in white. You can change the colour through using Pantone markers, and I've got a whole box. So you can do that. So I've just got a list here to show you, and I'll quickly just flick through them, um, some brands that are already making uh, product using what we've just seen. So if you, if you want to go shopping, these are the people that you can check out. So I'll just quickly scan through and I'll, point, I'll stop on one that I'd like to discuss. But um, as I said, we'll send this to you so that you can click these links and um, I don't know, they should take you directly to the website because I put them in blue, but if it doesn't work, you can again Googleize them. Sands Beast is my um, favourite. It's an Australian Melbourne-based brand and uh, specialises in absolutely everything is vegan in that in that store. And they're really beautiful bags. Yeah, have you heard th heard of them? D don't you think the name is very clever? Sands Beast. She's a beautiful designer too. If you if you go in there, um, she's so delightful. Um, who else do I want to show? Of course, Stella is in there. But all of these products that I'm showing to you are, are already on the market, including shoes. How nice is that? Um, the, this, this is a market that is not saturated. Um, uh, that's why a lot of the vegan, but purchasing vegan uh, leathers can be expensive, but that will change. The more designers we get using it, the less the cost, because then the manufacturing component will grow. Yes. Is in Europe, in Europe, you can get Pinatex, which is a re it's made out of pineapple, and you're looking at about, I would say, about twenty-five dollars per metre for that. That's still expensive, though. I think when you're uh, in, if it's wholesale, I th oh. yeah. So look at these. So flick, flick, flick. Please go back, have a look at those, and enjoy. But let's go and make something. And um, so these are some outcomes 
all of these are achievable today within the next, you know, 40 minutes or whatever. Um, so let's go over to the other side and then Michael's going to talk to you about the SCOBY and show you some examples on how they were grown and then you can make something. How does that sound? Yeah, let's go. You might want some distance from this, it gets a bit stinky. Good to go. Cool. Does that need that doesn't need to face me, does it? No. Cool. All right. So, have any of you guys ever made scoby? I mean, um, kombucha before? No. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I mine mine went mouldy also, so yeah. that's fine. Um, so if you, I mean, if any of you have ever seen sort of like what um, kombucha looks like when it's being brewed, um, you know, a lot of people brew kombucha at home and often what it looks like is basically you've got your tea and your sugar, um, which is in the bottom, which is basically what, it, the, what you're going to drink. And then what it grows on top because of the way that, um, you know, the, our, um, oh, what do we call it? The, you know, the, the basically the, the stuff, uh, germs floating around in the air, basically they get into it and they start to create what we call is the SCOBY, which is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So we've got yeast which is floating around in the air normally, okay, and that's what happens when we make um, sourdough, you create your dough, the yeast from the air gets in there and it starts to create your, um, you know, the fermentation that takes place with the, with the, um, the bread. Um, same thing happens with, um, with your kombucha. And so basically, kombucha is a fermented tea or it can be a fermented water with fruit in it or it can be a fermented anything. But um, what happens is that you get your, your tea growing in the bottom of the jar and then you get this beautiful thick um, scoby which grows on top. And the scoby is basically nature's way of protecting the, the liquid which is in the jar. And when you get um, things like mould growing in there, it's often it's because maybe a bug has gotten in there or another bit of bacteria has gotten in there and just made it go off. Um, so often, like, I've actually written out some instructions for how to make your own kombucha if you want to make it. Um, I won't go through all of that today because I'm more talking about how we actually take the SCOBY and transfer it. That's got instructions for both how to make the, sco the kombucha and then how to actually transfer it for the SCOBY. But it's about a, to make uh, the kombucha, it's about maybe a two or three week process. If you're already using um, a SCOBY, which you can buy a small SCOBY, from a health food store, you might need to call around because they don't all stock them, or you can buy them online and it'll come in a packet, it'll have a little bit of tea in there, it'll all be sealed in, and normally they keep them in the fridge to make them last longer, but as soon as you put it into your tea and get it at room temperature, it's going to start to grow and it's going to start to ferment as soon as it's in there. So um, what I actually did was um, a few months ago, like I started thinking about this, what we were going to do for Melbourne Design Week for this activity about... Um, three or four months ago before Christmas, you know, I'm, I'm an artist and I'm a designer and naturally I'm inquisitive. Um, I'm not, definitely not a scientist and have never made um, kombucha before. However, my mother-in-law makes kombucha and I always looked at it and I was like, what is that disgusting thing growing on the top? And she goes, that's a scoby. And I'm like, what do you do with it? And she goes, well, I'll just put it on the compost. But when I started asking around, I started to find that people who make their own kombucha, 
they hate getting rid of the scoby like they've got to get rid of it because you can't keep you ca it can't just keep getting thicker but they take they peel off the layer from underneath because they grow in like layers so they peel off the layer from the underneath and they keep the healthy layer and then they either put the next layer into another jar and they start stacking up their extra scobies and they call it their scoby what was it scoby hotel they call it you know it's the, it's the place where they store them all but they're not going to reuse them because you can't just have jars and jars and jars of kombucha sitting around so um what i actually found because i did a call out in my area and i said look i want to make this stuff called scoby leather haven't done it before can anyone um give me their scobies so that i can um do it and i thought people wouldn't do it i thought they'd think that were weird um 10 people within 24 hours had already said to me, look, we live, in, we live within your area, just come by and pick them up. And I had people give me like jars full of them and boxes full of them. And, you know, and so if you guys did the same thing, do a call out on Facebook, especially if you do it on a local community group, one, like if you've got a good, healthy, local, social, online community group, um, you'll find that people around you will be doing it. So I managed to gather all these scobies, but we also grew our own in our office here at work. So um, I work in the marketing department here and I work as a creative director, and, but I also work with um, people who are in admissions and people who are, do social media. And I started brewing this thing in the corner going, these guys are gonna hate me. Um, it was all covered up, and, but this one, it's beautiful. It smells like rich and sour and kombuchery. Um, but I had no idea whether it would actually grow on top, but maybe come around here, because I'll show you what happened. So, this is not ready to be able to use for, um, to turn into leather yet, but what this is, and you can smell it, and it's got like, so ours, we're not doing it in the way we're planning on drinking, so I ended up getting the odd fruit fly buzzing around. However, what it did, it started from this little guy. This is the one that I bought from, so I bought this, um, from my local, uh, you know, whole organic, um, you know, food supplier. And I said to her, look, do you have any scobies for sale? And she goes, yeah, I've got a fridge of them. So she gave me this one. And um, this one is a, a brewed from 100%, um, you know, natural, all healthy water from Dalesford. They've got like an all organic one there and they only feed them like organic tea, organic sugars, all those kinds of things. So it's really healthy. So she said, look, whatever you do, just make sure that you feed it with organic sugar and organic tea. And what I did was I, I take that, brew up a batch of um, tea, like a big thing of tea. I let that cool down and I put, uh, it's a, a lot of sugar in there. It's like about five cups of sugar mm, go into like it. Uh, you can use coconut sugar, yeah. I use just normal, um, you know, raw organic sugar. Now, it, it stayed like this for a couple of days where this guy was just floating around in the top. And then after a, about a week, I noticed on the side that it started to get kind of like a thickness to the sides and then I was looking at it and then our other tray which is over there similar to your one it got mold growing in it I was like oh this one's going to die and I felt so bad that this one wasn't working that I didn't want to look at it for a week and I uncovered it this morning and found that this guy had grown in here so that that is a beautiful big scoby which almost fills that tray and if I let it, I won't be able to do it now because I touched it with my hands and I'm a bit scared I might have um, put a bit too much germs and bacteria off my hands in there. Normally you should use gloves to look after them um, but I could dry that now and it will end up turning into like our leathers over there. So that if I let it for long enough, you know, if I kept feeding it properly, it would end up filling perfectly in here and once it gets to about a, a, an inch thick then I can take it and, and use it. So um, this is what um, a good healthy scoby is going to end up looking like. It probably won't have holes in it like these, but that's a that's a scoby which has been grown in probably not not in this one, but in a probably some kind of rectangular container. There's some round ones here which have been grown in round containers. These are great. Now these would be fantastic. Like that would be perfect to dry. Um, and if I was to put that maybe sit it on top of a a screen of um, oh, what do you call it? You know, fly screen. Don't use a metal one, but use the plastic version of it. The metal ones I've found tend to, um, they, they start to rust. And the rust and the scoby, because there's a lot of acid in the, in the scoby, it's very acidic, the tea. It tends to um, oxidise quite quickly. And you get these burn marks from where, like say what I've done here is I've actually created like a little frame out of um, two, I took two painting frames and just drilled holes through 
And wh what I've done is I've used these wing nuts to keep it all tight. But where those have gone through there, like these were brand new a week ago, and you can see that they've already started to oxidise because of the acid in the SCOBY. So what, I'd, what I'm going to do for my next round is instead of doing that, I'm going to use two sheets of um, thin, you know, fly wire, stretch them over a couple of frames, and basically I would just sit this in the middle of that and let them kind of sandwich together. You, you can't actually, you don't even need to squeeze them. They're just going to dry. Like that, that just dries. That starts thick. Yeah, it starts that thick. And then over time, as the liquid comes out of it, you, know, you want to give it a, probably about a week, two weeks in good warm weather to dry. Um, I had to use a heater to, to speed these up, but I'd probably prefer not to because it's just using more, more power to make something. Um, but you know, like... So, oh yeah, the, so the liquid in there, like if you made this in it, uh, so, well, the liquid's just going to basically just dry out of that. Like, so, I mean, you can see at the moment, it's got liquid, which is all soaked into it, but I don't know if you want to pick it up and feel it. It'll make your fingers stink a bit, but it's pretty interesting. But see how rope, like strong it feels, you know, so you can see that. I don't think it'll stretch. No, like basically I've taken one which is big enough to fit into there and then I've sandwiched it and then it goes paper thin like that over time. Yeah, yeah, it will. So I hung one up on the washing line and it dried out. Like just, I just put it up on a peg and it dried out. The only thing is that it doesn't end up going, it kind of ends up a bit sort of squashed and, you know. strong enough to hold its own body weight without ripping it? Yep, yeah. Like, I mean, you could try and pull that and it's probably not going to just easily pull apart. Um, I do suggest, though, if you make it and you dry it, definitely by no means dry it in your house because you can smell, like, it stinks, doesn't it? So this one here, this one hasn't been finished with anything yet. This one has got, um, this one's just basically the SCOBY by itself after being dried. These ones here, I won't pick them up because my fingers are all wet. Oh, I'll pick it up by the corner. That one there, I've actually finished it with, um, I've finished it by putting a combination of beeswax and, um, and uh, coconut oil. Um, I've put shellac on it to start with. So you can buy liquid shellac, French polish, just from, um, just from Bunnings. And basically I just got a, like a nice uh, soft brush and I just coated one side with it, flipped it over, coated it with the other side. I let that dry. And then what I did was on the stove top, I just took um, about, you know, maybe a teaspoon of coconut oil. I took um, maybe double that in beeswax. Yeah, now, you have to do the beeswax, but if you want to vegan? You could use other, yeah, you, you can use other approaches. Yeah. Yeah, you could use the Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. vegan yeah. wax. Yeah. yeah. It's so, like stuff that makes that's a good point. Shall I... You could look, this is just one way of doing it, but if you look it up how to coat uh, vegan leather, you'll find 50 different ways of doing it. I just use what I had at hand. So um, that's the other thing. So shellac's made out of, um, you know, cicada shells, but they're the cicadas, they're not taking them off live cicadas, they're taking them off the, the trees where they've left them. So um, anyway, if you go look, and I would also say that, like I said, by no means am I a scientist or am I an expert in making kombucha or kombucha leather. But I would say that this is all an experimental process and you would want to play around with different ways of doing this. So this, this is a very young process, generally. If you looked it up online, you'll probably see there's a number of people making them, but no one's really an expert. So it's a really good opportunity to experiment and see what you can do with it. So, you know, you might play around with going, all right, well, what happens if I take, um, you know, say like a SCOBY where like this one, this is a strawberry um, bread scoby and it's really beautiful. Like, so I've got one of these drying at home and it's just, it's like paper thin. It looks like a flower petal now. Um, but these ones are made because the woman who grew these ones, she said she doesn't use tea and she doesn't use sugar. She just takes the, the scoby and then she puts just a straw, she cuts a strawberry in half, puts it in there and that, the sugar in the strawberry is enough to make um, these. And she has a whole jar of these where they just kept growing and growing and growing. But she's drinking it and her tea would be amazing. Um, so they all, depending on what they're made with, depending on whether they're made with green tea, black tea, anything, stop laughing, you two. 
You could dye them during. These guys feel like they look like something else. I don't know what it is. I have to explain it. But um, yeah, they're they're. Let's just say they're sens sensual objects. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good question. So, um, so, sorry, what's your name? Tonya. Tonya asked a really good question. Okay, so when I did a call out on, um, on Tonya. my... I'm Tonya. Oh, wow. Tonya. Tonya. Double it's Tonya. Must be a day of Tonya. Together. Yeah. There's three Tonyas. Crazy. I'm with Jay. I saw, I did, yeah. I've never met a Tonya in real life. I've only, I've never met a Tonya with a J in real life. I'm a Y. Yeah, a Y. So, yeah. That's all right. It's a new catchphrase. Um, so Tonya with a J asked the question. Just getting, just let's let's house that one over here. All the Tonyas in the world, put their hands up. All right. So um, Tonya said, "Ask about the galleys." All right. So I, I managed to find a really nice loophole in this. So if you make uh, kombucha, and if you want to give away your scobies, like I said, people end up with jars of them. You're not allowed to give them away for to make tea out of. Okay. However, I uh, I put the call. I didn't even know that, but I could put the call out on Facebook saying, "Can anyone give me scobies? Because I want to dry them out and make leather." All the people say, "Yes, yes, we've got them. We're not allowed to give them away for food, but there's no reason why we can't give it away for leather." So. If you want to, well, it's a it's a living, it's a bio organism. So you know you got to make sure that they've been handled securely. Like you don't want to drink any of that because my hands have been in and out of it. But you want to make sure that it's been um, created in the right place. Someone would need a license to be able to make it healthy. Okay, um, you know because they're made in people's people's kitchens. Yeah. So. Anyway, basically what I've done is I've done that, I've taken it, I've, I've dried it out by basically, I'll, I'll pull this one apart to show how it's going to look. So, so that's two weeks, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's about a week. I used, um, I did use the dryer with it. I don't think, I think the other way of using um, the fly screen would be a lot easier and a lot quicker than doing this way. It's just because I come from a, ba a painting background. Yeah. I, I'm, I know how to do, um, how to stretch canvas. And so I kind of use this a similar way. Now this one, you can see it's really brittle around the edges because it's super dry. Um, and you can see where it has, where it has um, just gotten a bit rusty. So because like I said, you can smell how acidic it is, right? So if you think you're putting it with metal, as soon as you put it with any metal, it's going to do that. And that probably adds to the smell too. But I can cut those off and clean it up and make it look nice. Now that one's pretty good. What I also experimented when I was doing it was seeing how far you can take it, how far you can dry it until you can't use it. In a lot of things that I found that said you want, it should be brittle before you finish it, that's actually wrong. If it's brittle, you can't finish it with anything. It stays really dry. It won't absorb anything. So this one, you can see tears. These ones is not going to tear. Okay. So these are really, they are really robust. Now I don't want to, I, I reckon if I pulled it that hard enough, it's probably going to tear. I don't want to do that because I've only got the two at the moment. When I've done all these ones, I will have a bit of a, a testing run. But at the moment, you can see that works really well. But basically, all I'm going to do then is I take my um, I take my frame. I'm going to take my scoby and basically just putting it between. I actually found that I could not push that through the scoby. It's so tough. I actually needed to use the drill to get it to to work. So this morning in this morning's group, oh no, I don't have one. But um, I don't have one big enough to stretch out now. But basically, I'd put it in there. Um, I can probably show you a bit. Is that trace to it? Would you put it in a bigger frame? Or? Yeah, it would be a bigger frame though, so that I can have one nice solid piece. So I'd take that. Have you found that it would still stay intact with the collagen? I haven't tested because it's not, it's not ready yet. Yeah. It will though, That's because I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen people do ones which are this big, right. and they put them out on a big tray and just dry it and it yeah, works. Right. So if you've got one which is big enough to fit within, um, fit within there, you can actually smell it. It's just so strong. Do you think you could control the way that the um, scurvy grows, like the shape of it? If you had yep. a specific shape compared yep. to 
If you had a star-shaped box, it would grow as a star-shaped scoby. If you had it as a bunny rabbit-shaped box, it would grow as a bunny rabbit, yeah. But at the moment, these have been grown in, these would have been grown in a jar, which is that big. Uh, these ones have just torn apart because that one I took off the bottom of one, which was like off a whole one. These ones were whole ones. This one's sort of like one which has come off the bottom and I probably pull it off a bit pr prematurely. But basically, I just lay that across, across there put this on top of it, um, get all of those out. And I just found that using the drill was a lot easier for this. Now, if this was large enough, I could stretch it all the way, but it's still gonna work pretty well, but I can just sort of like line up. I've got all these numbered. Yep. If I go like that, so I can't actually push that through there, but because the drill's gonna screw it in there a little bit, I can use that. to be able to push it through, sandwich that in there. And the reason why I chose to use the wing nuts to start with was because I thought this is the best way to just be able to keep adjusting it as I go. So as the SCOBY shrinks in there, I can keep tightening it up and make sure that it stays tight in there. What I would suggest is don't use the wing nuts and just, oh, you could still use like two picture frames or anything rectangular like this. But from Bunnings, you can probably get some good um, like plastic clamps, you know, just the ones that you tighten up by, by squeezing them. And if you use those, then there's no metal to get in contact with that, okay? So anyway, so if I put that in there, I'd probably stretch that out a bit more, put another one in the bottom, another one over there, another one over there, leave it for maybe a week or two um, in a nice warm area, definitely not in your living room, and, um, and it's going to dry and it'll end up like like that. Um, that's a little bit brittle on the edges, but you can actually, like in, you can feel that it's still kind of a bit soft. You know, if, if it's too hard, it's not going to work. So to get them like these ones where they're beautiful and malleable and, and workable, they need to be, it still needs to be a little bit soft. And I promise you, even when they're like that, before you put the, the coating on them, they're going to smell like old feet and they're going to smell disgusting. But as soon as you you wax them and oil them, they actually become, they're more like aromatic, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So they, they get kind of like, if you smell leather when you hold it, it's not going to smell like leather, but leather's going to smell no, like... They're liquid. Oh, yeah. Because you yep. dye them like a leather, like in the... Yeah, in the liquid. So you put... Which you'd have to do it once it's dry. Probably, um, no, I think you can actually do it while it's still in liquid form. You can put food dye in there and it'll actually absorb it. So think about that one, which is pink. Once it's dry, it's going to be dead. Yeah, yeah. So Todd's going to show you quickly. Um, we've got about 15, 20 minutes now. So, so that gives you an idea of kind of what the process of doing is. I'm really sorry we don't have any we can give you to work with, but it is a really long process. Um, the other thing here is that this is a totally experimental process. There's no um, tried and tested perfect formula for how you make this yet. That's why it's exciting to be able to do it. From a designer perspective, I think that's the most exciting time when you get to make anything, when you get to explore something, you get to do something with your students and someone actually finds a better way and they go, hey, Michael, you did this well, but I've done it better. If you guys make this and you find a really great way to do it, let us know because we'd really like to know. Um, this is something like even Todd and I, we just started talking about a month ago because I was like, hey, I'm doing this thing. And he goes, oh, I'm an expert in, in vegan materials. I'm like, hey, let's do a workshop together. That's great. So, um, yeah, because you start a process like this will create brand new things and that's really exciting. So Todd's going to show you some stuff with how to use kind of like the, the vegan paper, paper leather to make something. We've got a short amount of time so you have to sort of hustle on it. I'll clean up all the stinky stuff and... Um, Sun, right? like not full sun, I would suggest just if it's, shade, but it gets yeah, if it's full sun, it's probably going to get like that. I'd say somewhere in the shade, yeah, yeah. I did originally put them out in the sun and then I thought this is not a good idea and took them back in again. Yeah. They need dry. Um, they, I found that on a day when there was a lot of humidity into the air, they actually absorbed the moisture again out of the air. Yeah. All right. I'll get some soap actually because it, it, that stink it stays in your hands for a while.
Oh, hello, virtual people. It's nice to sit, be with you again. I'm sorry that I didn't have my mic on to begin with. So we've just started this. And with that beautiful leather there, the one that, uh, the scoby one that uh, we had, um, I folded that into a crane, uh, origami crane. This is a little bit too thick for that much folding, but all of these ones work. So um, this one here I've got for you, if you want to take these with you, you can. I've got the cash. This there's five folds in it. It takes two minutes to do. Uh, there's a dog, there's an owl. They, they call this a poodle, but to me that looks like um, a baby Yoda. Uh, so you, can, you don't have to fold. I'm just saying if you're stuck for something to do. Um, oh, you're the best, Michael. Then I made two different ones because they've got two different backs. So this one has a pin, a large uh, a kilt pin, which I've got. And then here's your traditional brooch pins. Um, so the glue that's on the table here is used to glue pieces of this together. So if you want to stack, design something and stack it up and color it, you can. I actually have templates here. Now, all you people in the virtual world and virtual landscape, you can get things like this at um, Spotlight and places like that. So if you, there's no reason why you can't trace these off. Stack them on top of one another. You might do the white for the cloud, and then you might want this as your bird or something. Um, I have some lovely ones there. I'm a bit of a naturist, so I like... I like the animals and clouds. Um, so if you want to trace those off and cut them out, you can stack them. You can colour them with these because they ch you can change the colour with that. Um, and if you're going to put one of the traditional backings on, this glue is not the best one. This is for if you're going to glue your leather together. I have a hot glue gun on the back. You just need one tiny little drip on the spike and then you place it like that. So mine mine are very shoddy, my little examples, but I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration. Fold away, grab and go, because you haven't got too much time. I've got pencils here, and um, if you want to draw anything before you cut it and or fold it, there are art line markers and pencils there and scissors here. If you need help, holler out. Um, and if you want to fold, um, as I said, the, the cat face takes less than five minutes. And to trace out colour and cut one of these is about five to ten. Just one layer if I just want to make a silhouette of this? Or? Just one layer. Yeah, just one layer. That's all these are. And you can see it's they're quite tough. Mm -hmm. I didn't scrunch mine up before I worked with them, so they look a little woody, which if you like that is fine. Oh. But I actually oh. prefer <laughs> this texture when you... The more you scrunch it, and please take a few slices home with you if you want to do a bit more. I'm happy for you if you want to take a few extra pins home and a few extra pieces Did you just with you. Yeah. I literally, the other day, just got one of these, scrunched it up, twisted it around to create this organic-like mess, mm. and then I shoved a pin yeah. through it, folded them back, and I had like a rosette. Um, so you can do lots of things. Now, th you, they are washable, but if you want to, I said to Michael, you can't rip them, and he ripped it straight away, yeah. and I can't. Like, look, <laughs> look, I can't rip the bloody thing. Um, so it's tough to rip, but um, they're really quite... The more you get the heat of your hands around it, the um, softer they go, but it, it, it's really durable, so don't be scared that it's going to um, disintegrate because they can go in the washing machine. Oh, really? Yeah, they can go and in the washing machine. These, are these special pens? These are, these are Pantone uh, markers, so they're design markers for that we used to design with, but they work perfectly on changing Do the colour of off? these. No. Absor it'll absorb straight into the fibre.
yeah, exactly the same. It comes in, I think, five different colours. So you get this beautiful natural one, and then you get white, a stone grey, which is my favourite, and I couldn't get it anywhere. I think that must be the most popular, and a, a dark charcoal. Um, but it, you can change, if you get the white, you can change it to any colour through dyeing, different dyeing processes. Realistically, this is recycled paper that's been rewoven and coated. And so that's what gives it, you'll notice one side's more textural than the other. Yeah. This is what it looks like when you buy it. It comes on a roll, comes on a roll this wide, and it's all, so it's, this is what, so you, Oh, you can make bags. It actually comes, it, when you buy this in an art store, it comes with a free pattern. You can get it from some art stores. It's a bit... Eckersley's... I don't think that's where... The place where I had to run to get it, because I ordered this white one uh, two weeks ago from the, uh, the supplier in Queensland, the manufacturer, and then she was very sweet. She rang me up and she said, it might not get there for your day. So I panicked and I went out and I contacted, I, I must have contacted about 10 different places. I couldn't find it. And then thankfully uh, there was one arts uh, supplier in um, Richmond that had it and she only had one roll and it was this one roll of this natural. So it's, if you Google, you can find it. It's not expensive. For a roll, a whole roll, I think it's about $23, $25, something like that. Um, so, yes, you can make... I've se I have seen garments made out of it, outerwear, jackets. Um, so I'm going... That's my next challenge because... What does it sew? Is it quite thick? You can sew it. Yeah. yeah, you definitely can sew it. You can embroider onto it. You can do so many things. Special needles? Leather needle, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. See, look at it when you scrunch it up. Can you see that in the visual landscape? Buy some and play with it. It's lots of fun. I kind of don't want to just do that. I'm going to have to think about what I'm yes, doing. Yes, please. Yeah. Do. Well, in that case, well, wonderful. Take this as well. I'll tell you for why. Is because you might make something you don't want to poke through. And that, they, I know they look flimsy, but they actually are really good. Because when you do an origami one, you can thread it through. But if you're doing something where you're stacking or you create something really beautiful, you might not want to stab through. But these are brilliant, aren't they? Yeah. These pins. Everything we're using, uh, people in the virtual land, is um, you can get in, in your um, spotlight Lin craft things like that. This glue is um, ultra uh, craft glue, and this one's slightly tacky, um, and so it takes a little. It takes a few minutes to dry, but once it dries, it, it it's really solid and it dries clear. That's what I use to stack this bird on the cloud. I wish I'd done him on the white one now. <laughs> I must. I was feeling a bit moody when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> For that, you can't see in virtual land. It's this one with my little bird. I like it too. Stormy days. This was perfect for this morning. But the one I was telling them, Michael, that the um, Scoby one that you did, that you gave me, I folded it into three or four different origami things, and it didn't crack once. So that's why it's got all those lines in it. I actually. The, um, it looked like that. It's kind of lumpy to start with. When you first oil it, it goes really flat, like beautifully. Because <coughs> to oil it, you, um, you need to melt down the beeswax and the oil. It's all there in those instructions. But you melt down, I, I, like I said, about a third of the oil and about two thirds of the beeswax, or whatever it is you want to use. Melt it down, and it, you've got to do it while it's hot. Um, so you go over this after you've already. Perfectly flat on the ground. It'll have all the beautiful textures from all the colours in there. But this one 
I love it. Yeah, I'd made. I've got this uh, crane here. That's what I was making with that uh, one there. I made one of those, but I couldn't get it perfect, perfect. So I undid it. I've got. I'll try again because I want to give it to Michael because he made the scoby. <laughs> so it's got to look right. <clears throat> It's beautiful, isn't yeah, it? it is. We had a couple of girls in the last one that um, they actually, she did a series of stripes in blue, white, and uh, like a, a fuchsia pink. Yeah. And then she she created strips and she wove the, she, uh, wove the tops together and then she's gonna make earrings out of them. Yeah. So if you wanna, and there was a lady sat here who made a necklace as well, which was really interesting. Um, she she created little strips, wove the top together, wound it with another piece, and then attached it to something she found downstairs, like an, a piece of elastic oh. she found downstairs in the uh, meat swap. Oh. So you can do a thousand things, like your earrings that you're wearing. Did you make those? Yes, oh. oh, they're beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. They're really nice. So if you want to make earrings, people in virtual land. Uh, you can get all the bits and pieces from your um, spotlight. Here, there's a wonderful place, ladies, called Jimmy's Buttons. Mm -hmm. And he has everything at wholesale cost. So any kind of hardware that you Where need. Um, I want to say, I want to say Collingwood, but I don't, it's not far. Jimmy's Buttons, because I, I normally order online now, I'm lazy. Um, I haven't been there for a while, but they've got everything. It's like, you know where, it, have you seen Harry Potter where they go to get their wands? <laughs> it's like going into Diagon Alley. There's this little old grey man that sits at the end of the room. What do you want? He's grumpy. And uh, I just adore going in there. Um, but that's what it's like. So go in there for a good hunt and find. Guys, we've run out of time. <coughs> With you. Home with you and just to finish them off. Take home some extra material if you want to, um, you know, take home another couple of sheets of paper yeah. if you want to. And make sure um, email us or ask us any questions if you want. Yeah. Do take um, take the instructions for how to that's what the whole process for how to do. At least you've got your colours in. You know, like I said, it's a work in progress. You know, this is all about um yeah, it's beautiful. Design processes, yeah. which, so you say which just is a, can I just do a little hot dance? Glue do a little bit of this glue. This glue to put them together. I was thinking maybe just have it as like a... Oh, individuals. Yeah. Oh, in that case. Oh, everybody in the virtual space, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us today. Go to our website if you want more information or if you've got questions, you can call us. See you soon. I love that. No, I, I want to go... I desperately want to go on to one of those TV shows.